Wow, no big loan. Um, some passages of scripture that I would like you to take a look at. I'm not going to talk about the specific verses because I want you to read the verses in context. Okay? Um, first one is Ephesians 4. Second one is Romans 12. And the third one is 1 Corinthians 12. Next week, I'm going to hand out some papers for you to fill out. Um, you can keep them anonymous, but I would like to know what you guys think my job is. And what you think your job is. Okay? And, and I'm using job specifically. Uh, you could say ministry, but when you say ministry, all of a sudden you have pic pictures of the white collar and, and long robes, and I'm not that. Um, so your homework is read those three passages of Scripture, and next week I'll bring papers for you to fill out as to what is my job and what is your job. Okay? Fair? Yes. One person thinks it's fair. Yes. <laughs> now, in this study, I'm going to start today with, with a uh, little bit of a different slant on this thing. Uh, we will be spending time in each of those passages, and there's actually a couple other ones that I'm, I'm going to touch on as well. Uh, in 1 Corinthians chapter 12, go ahead and turn there. If you're having trouble, it's right before 2 Corinthians. <laughs> now this, this whole passage we're going to use and we're going to break out and, and figure out what God is telling us via Paul as to how we should work together. Okay. Um, but there's a, a couple of parts in chapter 12 that we kind of got to separate out from each other because it talks about the body and you being part of the body and me being part of the body. And then it talks about uh, gifts and, and the gifts that God has given you and me to make the body work effectively. Um, so as, as we're going through all this, Paul is talking to the Corinthian church um, He's talking about all of these different gifts that, that God has given to the church via his people to work properly. Okay? So we have, I'll, I'll read down here, start verse 27. Uh, it says, Now you are the body of Christ and individually members of it. And God has appointed in the church first apostles, second prophets, third teachers, then miracles, then gifts of healing, helping, administration, and various kinds of tongues. Are all apostles? Are all prophets? Are all teachers? Do all work in miracles? Do all possess gift of healing? Do all speak with tongues? Do all interpret? But earnestly desire the higher gifts. And then he says right at the bottom, and I will show you a still more excellent way. Now, I don't know about you guys, but every time I read that verse, and I will show you still more excellent way, I always think of uh, Bill and Ted, <laughs> the most excellent way. Um, you know... I think what with Bill and Ted, because you know they're making the new Bill and Ted, right? Right? So if we could just throw away the second one and make this one the new second one, that would be great. Um, I will show you a still more excellent way. And then we jump over to chapter 13. Um, he changes gears a little bit 
And then we start off in chapter 14. So start right here at 14, verse 1. Pursue love and earnestly desire the spiritual gifts, especially that you may prophesy. Okay. So chapter 12, we have this listing out of, of the gifts that God has given the body. Um, we see a, a list of those gifts. And, and by the way, that's not all the gifts. Okay. This is just a sampling of what Paul is trying to get across to Corinthians and, and be an extension to us. So we see uh, him list off all of these gifts and then he, we see that he immediately turns around and, and qualifies that by saying, does everybody have the same gift? Well, no, okay? Um, he wraps this up, says, I will show you still more excellent way. And so we're gonna get into verse or chapter 13. Now, this is gonna be kind of weird because this really doesn't talk about the gifts per se. But this is the foundation in which all of the gifts can operate. Okay, So we see at the end of 12, he lists all these gifts. Now he's going to show us a more excellent way. So we go into 13, uh, verse 1. If I speak in the tongues of men and of angels, but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have all faith so as to remove mountains, but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all that I have, and if I deliver my body up to be burned, but have not love, I gain nothing. Okay? Now, when we get into chapter 12 down the road a little bit, you're going to see that he just listed every single one of those gifts in chapter 12 and then said without love, they're meaningless. Okay? Um, I'm going to tell you a secret. I grew up in a Pentecostal church. Nobody left. <laughs> um, I say that because of how Paul introduces and leaves out of the, this book of love. Um, he says that we are to eagerly desire spiritual gifts and we are to pursue love. Okay, you see the contrast? If I lay those off side by side, you want some of these, but you have to have this because without love, this stuff, you, you know, that's like trying to wash the dishes in my house when I have all the grandkids. And I wash it, I put it in the drain, I turn around, it's coming back dirty. Um, and, and by the way, I, I owe a huge thank you to Benjamin and Shay and Thaddeus. Um, I don't know, things get really weird in my head sometimes. And several months back, uh, I had talked to Judah about having a cookout and a camp out in our yard. Uh, now, there, there was still snow on the ground at that point, um, and he wanted to do it right then, and I said, no, I don't think so. Um, so we did this, this camp out this weekend, and we had um, almost all of the grandkids. We had eight, and um, that was too much. <laughs> if Benj and Shay <laughs> hadn't stepped in and helped out, and Thaddeus hadn't helped us, I would still be in bed. <laughs> I'm not, no kidding, you know. We let them cook hot dogs over the, the fire pit, and then they got marshmallows, no, I'm sorry, um, what do you call those things? S'mores. s'mores, but not just s'mores, it's s'mores plus. Okay, and you're like, what's plus? Well, you, you take a piece of chocolate, you put it on the marshmallow, and that's your s'more. What if you put a Reese's peanut butter cup on the marshmallow? Or an almond joy on the marshmallow? See, you see, there's a critical flaw in my, my thinking here. Because I loaded them all up on sugar, and they weren't going home. 
So, um, two o'clock in the morning, they're still talking. And I don't know, I, I heard that somebody saw some eyes or somebody saw something, and it was a stampede. <laughs> Your parents are downstairs. <laughs> now, I learned a lot about my limitations the last couple of days. Uh, actually, when, when we get home this afternoon, Satch and I still have debris to clean up. Um, but, but, this will be a memory they have. Well, well, well. Um, I'm sure Satch and Benj and Shay will, re Shea will remember it as well. <laughs> so, back to what we're talking about here. Uh, love. Now, you guys are aware of the, the four different types of love in the Greek language, correct? All right, we'll hit them real quick. Real quick. Uh, first one is eros. And this is a, a, a typically what boys and girls first feel when they're attracted to someone. Okay, um, that's not actually that that word is not used in scripture. Um, the second one is phileo, and that's do you know a, a city that has the name phileo in it? Philadelphia. Philadelphia. Um, and what's Philadelphia known as? Brotherly love. That's how uh, you guys can remember that, and, and it's it's uh, not necessarily family, but it's those people that that uh, I mean, you're stuck with what you got born with. You know, I tried several times to send my siblings back, and they wouldn't take them. So you're just stuck with them. But then you invite people into your life that become a part of your life, much like you guys are for me. That um, you become phileo, like like a brother or a sister. Now, storge, that's the third one, that is actually the family type love that you would think Philadelphia was, or Phileo was. Um, this is the love that you have because your brother didn't kill you when you were young, okay? Um, this, is, this is, you know, um, there is one who sticks closer than a brother, okay? Um, so there's always a love that I have for my family. They're in Houston. I'm here. What does that tell you? <laughs> Absolutely nothing because I love them. I just hated Houston. Um, so, store gay, family love, and then the last one is agapeo. Agape. This type of love is used almost exclusively um, as the way that God loves us. It is a love that is not determined on the worth or the value of the person. It's determined on what the giver wants, not needs. The giver will look at us and desire to love us unconditionally, not, not requiring anything of us. And this is the kind of love that God has for us, and it's also the kind of love that we are supposed to have for each other. Okay. So now we're going to get into the love chapter. 13, uh, let's go ahead and pick up verse 4. What we are seeing here is, is an, an outline, um, a sketch that, that we are going to fill in as we walk with him. Uh, so this is, this is the outline of what is love. Okay, So love is patient and kind. I don't know about you guys, but I'm already two strikes. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful. It does not rejoice at wrongdoing, but rejoices with the truth. Love bears all things, believes all things, Hopes all things, endures all things. 
Now, that little passage right there, that's where we start. We start looking at these, and, and some of these I'm, I'm further up on than others. Uh, some of you are going to excel in some of these that I, I struggle with. Um, but this is the outline. This is the sketch, and it's our job to fill that in. Okay? But now he, he shifts gears again. You know, this, this whole thing was just a parenthetical statement. And we come to back down to the gifts. Um, and he says, love never ends. As for prophecies, they will cease. As for tongues, they will cease. And for knowledge, uh, it will pass away. For now, we know in part, we prophesy in part, but when the perfect comes, the partial will pass away. Now, there's, there, there's a next verse that uh, we should be looking at very closely in regards to our walk and in regards to our life. Um, when I was a child, I reasoned like a child. When I became a man, I gave up childish ways. For now we see in a mirror dimly, but then face to face. Now I know in part, then I shall know fully, even as I have been fully known. So faith, hope, and love abide. These three, but the greatest of these is love. Now, as we start talking about our roles in the body of Christ, we need to remember that it is all built on the foundation of love. Okay? If you're not operating out of love, you're already in big trouble. Okay? You're already in big trouble. I know that, that sometimes God calls us to love people that are less than lovely. But remember that the love is based on the gift the, the love that we receive. You can't pour out love if you haven't received love. Okay? It's going to be faulty. It's going to short. It's going to goof up. So, chapter 14, we, we get into, we, we shift back into the minutia of, of how the body of Christ is supposed to work. Okay? And, and this is where we're going to start drawing from as we determine our role in the body. All right? So what's my job? What's your job? Um, those are difficult things to, to answer sometimes. Okay? Um, because God doesn't work the same way in all of us, because each of us is different. Okay? Each of us is coming from different backgrounds. Each of us has different life experiences. Each of us has a, a unique rela relationship with God. Um, so the, the love that he pours out to me doesn't look necessarily like the love he's pouring out to you. Okay? As we get into these things and we start determining what our roles are biblically as compared to culturally, um, you will find out that God has gifted you to be a part of, to be a blessing to the body of Christ, the church. Okay? Um, if your gift to Jesus Community Church is to park your rump in one of these chairs and you know maybe sing the songs and tune out the message, but you come faithfully, hmm. see, God has a role for you to play. One of the unfortunate things in the American church is we have taken so many of these giftings and we have rolled them all up in a ball and said, this is the pastor. And I will tell you right now, I'm not all this. Okay? I, don't, I have not met a pastor yet. Who was all this? Matter of fact, we read in scripture that they were not all this. Now, the reason that the pastors have all of this is because it's easier to pay the pastor to do that job. By the way, this is not me talking, I'm talking generally. Okay, so don't get up and walk out. Uh, we wrap everything up and give it to the pastor because we don't want to do it. Well, it needs to be done. So we're paying the pastor, so he should do it. 
as we go through these things, as we start looking at how God has orchestrated, developed, designed his body, we each play a unique role. In this, uh, there are a couple things you can do to figure out your role. Uh, hopefully that's what we're going to do over the next two weeks, is, is uh, I'm going to have you take a couple of tests and, and kind of see where you're at on the, the uh, gifts to see what you God has gifted you to do. Um, and it may not necessarily fit into each of these. Okay? Because this is only a partial list. Romans 12 and Ephesians 4 have other things. Okay? Um, one of the ones that I believe um, is not listed here are the people that are gifted with music. Not just to play or sing or do, but they are, have a ministry in music that I believe Stephen and he do an incredible job with. Not just because they, they're talented, but because they listen to the Spirit of God as to what songs we should do. I don't know where Angie or Steve got access to my iPad, because that's where I keep all my messages. But they got in there and they start looking at me and they're like, okay, we're going to do all these songs. And they always fit with what I'm going to be doing. So, um, we're going to look at this. We're going to try and figure out what strengths you have, what weaknesses you have, and for me too, uh, what weaknesses we have. And we're going to start trying to find the balance. Um, because one of the things that leads to burnout in the body of Christ is operating in your own strength in a job that needed to be done and nobody else did it. Okay? You get burned out very quickly that way because you're not designed to do what you're doing. You may do it well, but it's not what you were called to. Okay? Um, the other thing that uh, causes burnout is not just being <coughs> in the wrong ministry, uh, but it's also a lack of being in the right ministry. It's, it's where God designed you to fit. Now, um, how well would we hear if instead of ears we had elbows. I mean, if you, I mean, you look at the body and you, you change parts around and, and put different things in different places, they tend not to be as efficient as the way God designed them to be used. Okay? As we go through this study, it is my hope, it is my prayer, that eyes will be opened, including mine, as to what our place is. Now, you may be in a season right now where you need to rest, you need to be fed, you need to be encouraged, you need to recuperate, you need to heal. But if you stop there, you become the uh, couch potato. You, know, you become that, that uh, you know, as, as uh, Solomon writes in Proverbs, a lazy man will not even bring the food from his plate to his mouth. Um, yeah, that's the Glenn translation. Um, we so often, when something happens, burns us out, one of the first things people do when they get burned out is what? They leave. They leave. Um, I know a, a husband and wife team that that have this, this, I don't think they even realize it's a pattern, but it's a pattern. They find a church that they like, and then they jump in, full everything, and they, their entire life is about that church. And they go to everything, and they, they go early to set things up, they stay late to take things down, they're responsible for this and that and the other thing, and then after a year and a half or two years, guess what happens? Burnout. And they stop going to that church, and they, they actually stop going to church for a while. And then God prompts them to go to a church, and they go, and they like the church. And then what happens? The same thing <coughs> repeats every time. Okay. Um, we we have to work together. Um, 
one of the reasons I don't sing up here on the stage, and, and I, I'm really sorry, guys, I don't remember the words. So I just make them up as I go. Um, so, I, you know, I, the pitch is okay. You know, I'm close to where it's supposed to be, but I have no idea what the words are. Um, 